just leave it here. I'm not going to give you numbers to start and stop at. I'm going to leave it here, show you how to get this, and later on we'll talk about how to do the whole thing together. So remember this is an introduction. So indefinite integral means that you're not going to be able to find the area definitely. It's what I call indefinite. Oh yeah, I guess I should call it, this will be like a subsection. So there's a new word on the board, integral. I'll bring it, I'll bring down to what an integral actually is, it's, it's not a hard concept. Um, Given a function, let's call it f. On some interval, let's call it i. I know this doesn't start out so fun right now. Okay, it sounds it sounds boring. It's it's not that bad. Stick with me. Given a function f on some interval i, capital F is called the antiderivative. Please make a note here, this is also the area function. Okay. In general, we call the antiderivative just the capital letter of whatever the function is. So if we have a function f, the antiderivative is capital F. That's all we're saying here. It will stand ultimately for the area function of your curve. Do you follow me on that? Now let's, that's what it'll stand for. F is called an antiderivative. If this is true. If you can take the first derivative of your capital F, your antiderivative, and it equals your f of x. You'll notice I used the word and instead of the word the. Think back to like 10 seconds ago, maybe like 30 seconds ago, when I said you had a plus c. You can actually almost see it in the purple writing that it doesn't quite erase that well. Remember how we had several, actually an infinite number of functions that you could take a derivative of? and it will give you your original function back again. That's why I say and. That plus c gives you a whole bunch of them, a whole lot of them. And so what we're doing here is we're saying f. f should be some function that when I take a derivative of it, it gives me my function I'm looking at. That's what happens. That's what an antiderivative is known as. Now, we just talked about it like this. Right? Same stuff. a was the antiderivative. F is the antiderivative. Same stuff. Okay. okay. Let me give you the example that we just talked about. So capital F of X is the same thing uh, A of X. So the same thing as area. Okay. You remember this example, right? In fact, it's uh, it was on the board. It's on the board right there. Here's what we'd say for this. We would say that F of X has an antiderivative of capital F of X. And capital F of X should be one third or X cubed over three. You okay with this so far? Is this the antiderivative or an antiderivative? It's one of many. It's one of many. It's one of many. This is an antiderivative. This is one antiderivative. I'm gonna say anti D. Why is it antiderivative? Why? Well, look it. If you take a derivative of this, does it not equal this? Why? Because the derivative with respect to x of this thing is this thing, which is f of x. That's why it works. So this is all I'm saying here, folks. An antiderivative is this property. It says I take a derivative of it, and it gives me a function. 
That's what it is. This is one of those. Are there more? There are many more. There are infinitely many more. I gave you, I gave you another one. Uh, another f of x would be x cubed over 3 minus 4. Is that another one? That's another. That's another one of those antiderivatives. That's why, in general, all of them will have this form. That's why we have the plus C, to say, OK, you know what? I'm kind of tired of writing every constant over here. I don't want to write minus 4. I don't want to write plus 3. I don't want to write plus whatever. I don't want to write 0 plus pi minus 1 half. That's all garbage. I don't want to write that. I want to represent this. This represents all of the possible antiderivatives. Do you follow me on that? I can't have any other x's, because that would alter the derivative. But constants don't, because when you take a derivative of a constant, it gives you 0. So this right here is all antiderivatives, the family of all antiderivatives. And that is also the integer. I'll talk about that next time. This represents the family of all possible antiderivatives for f of x equals x squared. Antiderivatives will other functions have different antiderivatives? Of course they were. Of course they were. Other functions have different derivatives, so they will have other antiderivatives. Uh, what I will do next time is I will talk to you about what an integral is, what an uh, integration is. It's basically you find out the same thing as doing antiderivatives. So I'll show you some notation that will be where we continue. Our study of calculus has brought us to this point where we're not talking about derivatives so much anymore. In fact, we're basically doing the opposite of a derivative. From last time, we learned that if a function has an area under its curve, that's the area function. Or, in other words, that's the antiderivative. So basically, it's left to us to undo a function by pretending it's a derivative and saying, how can I reverse the process of taking a derivative? That process is called anti-differentiation, or finding the antiderivative. We, we left with this example. The antiderivative of x squared is 1 third x cubed plus c. Why the plus c? Good. Yeah, the point of an antiderivative was, if I take a derivative of it, in other words, the derivative of one-third x cubed plus c, it will give me back my original function. That's the idea of an antiderivative. I take a derivative of it, it gives me my original function back. Does that make sense to you? The plus c is there because, well, any constant is going to go away when I take a derivative. So that is the, basically a family of curves, a family of area curves, for which when I take a derivative of it, it gives me my, my original function back. Did you understand that from last time? That's basically a last time concept. Now, the process of finding the antiderivative is also known as integration. So when you hear the word integration or find the integral, it means find the antiderivative. Does that make sense to you? So antiderivative and integral or antidifferentiation and integration, synonymous. They mean the same thing. This process, and I mean the process of finding the antiderivative, is also called integration. integration. show you something. Here, here's what we, basically our, our definition in a nutshell. This, this is really it. Our definition of an antiderivative in a nutshell says, if I take the derivative, I even have it on the board already, if I take the derivative of my antiderivative, it gives me back my original function. Do you follow that? If I take the derivative of this thing, it must give me this thing. Do you follow? Okay. 
there's another way that we're going to write this. You see, this is kind of confusing because this doesn't let us go from here to here, right? This basically just says, if I do this thing, it will give me this thing. You follow? So we're going to write this a little bit differently. We're going to introduce a symbol called the integral. Remember, an integral means find the antiderivative, or perform integration, which is to find the antiderivative. So this and what I'm about to write mean exactly the same thing. This says if I take a derivative of the antiderivative, it gives my function. This says if I find the integral of my function, it will give me my antiderivative. <clears throat> plus c. Because we don't know the constant, right? We, we talked about that already. It's a family of curves. By the way, is that c important, that yes. constant? Yeah, that's two points on the test, or every time. So you have to have the c. That represents, I don't know the exact integral as far as the constant, and it represents a family of curves from which I take a derivative and I get back my original. So this, <laughs> this constant must be there. And this right here is called your indefinite integral. I think I referenced that before. I said it's indefinite, an indefinite integral, because you don't have any boundaries. You don't know where you're going. Basically, right now, all we're doing is finding the area function. It's very similar to this. You remember when I had to find derivatives? You ended with things in terms of x, right? So while that represented a slope, it wasn't an actual slope until you plug a number in. Do you follow me? This is the same thing. This is going to represent an area, but it's not an actual area until you plug something into it. And that's why it's called indefinite and not definite. Definite would be I'm able to plug numbers in and I get areas out. This is called the indefinite interval. the indefinite integral. <clears throat> and these things say exactly the same thing. Interchangeable. This one says take a derivative of your antiderivative, you get the function. This says find the integral of your function. What this says is this. It says find the antiderivative of this. Ah, there it is. That, that's the whole idea. Do you understand the notation we will do? What, what is the dx there? That's a good question. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, that dx tells you what you're taking the integral with respect to. So what your variable has to be. So this dx right here says, I'm taking this with respect to x. So that variable has to be x. If it's not, we can't do it. Does that make sense? It's got to be there. And we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more as we go on and on. Uh, but basically, I want to get down to the, the names, the notation. What's that called? Integral. That's integral symbol or integral, that's right. What this means is find the antiderivative or undo this as if it were a derivative of something. So give me some function that I can take a derivative of and it will give me back what you start with. That's the whole idea right here. You okay with this so far? One note, this is also true. I hope this doesn't blow your mind, but I'm, I'm basically restating things a few different ways so that you see them a couple ways. Let's see if you can manage to do this. This is kind of critical thinking on a, a lower level. What's that stand for? Integral. Integral, or what else was it called? Antiderivative. That's an antiderivative, right? What would you suppose would happen if I took a derivative? <coughs> 